let's look at a quick example using buoyancy force. And we're going to look at uh, loading a container ship. So if we want to figure out what is, if we load a container ship with a bunch of cargo to its maximum limit that the boat can handle, how much will this lower the ship in the water? Well, we need some additional information. First thing is how much are we going to load into it? And I modeled this problem after um, a relatively classic style vessel that can be found um, that I believe is able to go through the Panama Canal. So it's a type of boat that will go through a Panama Canal. So you can load 70,000 metric tons, which is 70 times 10 to the 6 kilograms or 70 million kilograms. It's a lot of mass. Well, these ships are large. They have, from the front to the back, is about 230 meters, so over two soccer pitches long, and it's 30 meters wide, so almost 100 feet uh, wide. It's quite a large ship. It's got a lot of weight in it. But we want to know how, how far down is this? Do we have to worry about hitting the bottom of, uh, of the ocean or the Panama Canals we're going through? Well, what we're going to do is we know that this extra weight that we're going to put in the, in the ship, we're going to put in these storage containers, and this extra weight is going to be countered by the extra buoyancy force. So the more we submerge an object in the fluid, the higher the buoyancy force. So the ship floats to begin with, we put extra mass on it, extra weight will push it down, it gets countered by extra submerged volume and extra buoyancy force up. So we can just, we can kind of ignore what the ship is starting with um, and just look at what the change is. So the buoyancy force, we look at our free body diagram and we have a buoyancy force pushing up and an extra weight force pushing down. And we substitute in for the buoyancy force and we rearrange, we're going to move the mass times gravity, this extra weight force to the other side and we'll see that the fluid times the volume of the submerged object, the extra submerged volume, times gravity has to be equal to the downward weight force. And we're going to go one step further. Uh, we're going to eliminate out the factors of g, and we're going to convert our volume to an area and a height. We want to know how far down in the fluid we submerge. We're looking for h. We have some dimensions up here that will give us our area of our ship. And we're going to substitute in for um, Substituting in this buoyancy equation with the numbers, we're going to make one approximation in this. It's, you know, we do this. Um, so we're going to assume that the ship has is a rectangular ship. It has 30 meters at every point. This is the beam uh, of it. 30 meters is actually its maximum. But, you know, just for a rough estimate, we're going to use 30 meters as the width of the ship at every point and 230 meters as the length of ship at every point. So we're thinking that it's a rectangle. Just makes the math a little bit easier to deal with. So we have our added mass of 70 million kilograms. We have our area is 230 times 30 meters squared. And we have the density of the fluid, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. We'll assume we're in fresh water. If we're in salt water, that number will be a little bit different. And we calculate this out, and it comes out to about 10 meters, or 33 feet. Which means if this ship, which is given close to those uh, uh, measurements, if we load this full with 70,000 met 70, metric tons, this thing is going to drop by over 30 feet. So it may not start off um, that low in the water, but after you put it in, it's dropping even lower. Just kind of a fun little problem, and this is one of the reasons why only certain size ships can go through, say, the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal, is because the physical side, how long or how wide they are, may determine how well they go through the specific parts of the locks. But they also normally have how much weight they can support, how much tonnage they can support, and that's because these things only have a limited depth that they can go to. So they want to make sure that it can not scrape on the sides. If they have locks to go through, that it doesn't have to worry about, we have to worry about closing the gates. And we want to make sure we don't scrape on the bottom if we're full or empty. So just kind of a fun example. 
one other thing, just, just to kind of pique your curiosity a little bit, is that we used fresh water here. If we use salt water, this number is different, and the height that we float in will be different. So, kind of a question to ask yourself, um, if which one has the risk of sinking? If a freshwater ship goes to salt water, or if a salt water ship goes to fresh water, which one will float lower in the water? So I just challenge you to think about that uh, as you're thinking about buoyancy force and fluid dynamics.